Hello and welcome to tip bundle number five. This is Martin Brennan, product manager of Imagineer Systems, and we're going to go through three of the tips that we post to Facebook and Twitter and convert it into a small tutorial. Now today's three tips are actually pretty closely related, so I'm going to run through a single shot and just go through them quickly one by one. Okay, so we have a shot here provided to us by stockfootage.com, and I want to track the side of the car. Now, I've already tracked the front part of this, so I've got the ground here already masked out, so it doesn't interfere with the side. And I'm going to draw a new spline now for tracking the side. So when you create a new layer, you're making two things. You're creating the spline that you're actually drawing, but you're also creating the surface which is used for a number of things. It can be used to visualize how your track is going. It can be used to define the area you want to export in a shot. And it can also be used to manipulate the tracking data when you track in manual track mode. So you can manipulate this surface at any point. So for example, if I wanted to put it up here on the window area, I can now use that to help visualize the track as I go from this window. So I'm going to turn on my perspective here and we'll set our value to 90 and I'm going to start tracking backwards and we can see that surface is now moving along with our track in the area that we position the corners of that surface. So if I start tracking forwards we'll see the same. Those corners for the surface are staying in the corners of the window because that's where we placed it and it shows that our track is going well. If we decide that we don't want it there, we can manipulate it in a number of ways. We can either move the sides, the corners, or we can use the Q, W, and E tools to physically move the whole surface object, or obviously a combination of things. The thing that you've got to take away from this, however, is that when we move the surface, we're not animating it. It's still moving along with the tracking data, but we're not generating keyframes for this surface. So this means you can continually update and move your surface around without it actually affecting the tracking data. The only case where this is actually different, and I'm just going to adjust this back to the window for this example, if we switch to manual mode, you'll see that my tracks becomes individual keyframes, and now if I move down the timeline, you can see this little red box around the surface area. If I move this manually now back to the original position of the window, you can see that it's actually manipulating the shape over here because now it's affecting the tracking data. And you can see also that it creates a tracking key in the timeline. So now when I drag through the timeline, you can see it actually tweens between the original tracking data that we did in auto mode and the key that we created manually over on this frame. Now we don't recommend using manual tracking unless you absolutely have to to fix a problem shot, but it's a very, very useful tool to be able to adjust problem areas within your footage. Okay, so when you draw a layer inside Mocha, what you are doing is telling it that this is the area I want you to search for to get your tracking information. So if we turn our perspective on here and start tracking backwards, what it's doing is the tracker is searching in this search area and saying, where can I see this information next? We'll go to the next frame and update the shape to search for the new area. This means that the shape itself is a child of the tracking data and not a controller of the tracking data. So if I just come back to the middle point here and we turn on our surface, you can see here that as we scrub through the timeline, our tracking information, our shape, and our surface are all moving along in the same way. But if I move my shape, my surface stays in the same spot. This is because the surface and the shape are children of the tracking data, and so when I move my shape, it's not affecting the tracking data, and therefore not affecting the surface.
Now we've covered a similar tip to this previously in one of our other tip bundles, but it's good to reiterate just so that you see it in relation to the other tips we just talked about. In this particular case, we've tracked our shape and we can see it going through our scene, and we can see that shape's moving nicely in perspective and it's warping correctly compared to where we first drew it. However, it's not very easy to see that there might be some problems with our tracking data. If I turn on my surface, we can scroll backwards and see that it's tracked reasonably well, but as we come through the scene, you'll start to see it skew incorrectly as we pass this foreground object and it obscures part of our shape. So it's good to always have the surface on so we can see how the tracking is going over time and we can go back and correct before we see any more mistakes. In this particular instance, I should have moved my layer below my foreground object so that it blocked out this part of the shape and so the foreground wouldn't throw off my track. An even more productive workflow is to also turn on the grid because you can see here, even though I've lined up my surface, it's actually not that well lined up with the corners on the lines of the window here. And so the grid lets you see just that little bit better how that surface should be sitting in the shot so that it's resting where you want it for an insert or other tracking data. Now when I scrub through the shot, we can definitely see how that grid is moving over time. And again, as we get to that problem area, the skew is much, much more dramatically realized because we've got a bigger surface area to see how that shot is going. So that wraps it up for tip bundle number five. You can always find our tips on Twitter at Imagineer System with the hashtag MochaTips. And you can also go to Facebook at facebook.com slash Imagineer Systems. This has been Martin Brennan, Product Manager for Imagineer Systems, and I'll see you next time for tip bundle number six.